This episode is sponsored by Wacom, Wacom Wacom.com. Yeah, thank you, Wacom. As a reminder, one lucky artist who participated in this episode will receive a Wacom Cintiq Pro 13, and that's pretty damn cool. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. Have you heard of the awesome new art expo that Bobby Chu from Schoolism is starting? It's called Lightbox, and you're not going to want to miss it. If you could write a love letter thanking the art community, it would be the Lightbox Expo. Lightbox's mission is to educate the public about the artists behind their favorite movies, animation, games, and illustrations. With the simple goal of giving back, Lightbox is about showing appreciation to the artists who have dedicated their lives to creating memorable art. The vision is simple. Lightbox wants to unite, educate, and celebrate art and artists from all over the world. A collaboration between acclaimed illustrator Bobby Chu, the crew at Schoolism, and Emerald City Comic Con founder Jim DeMonicos, Lightbox is taking place at the Pasadena Convention Center in Pasadena, California from September 6th through the 8th, 2019. You don't want to miss it. For more information on Lightbox, please visit lightboxexpo.com. And while you're there, check out all the amazing artists that are going to be there. I'm going to be there as well and have a booth. I'm going to be doing live demos, uh, probably uh, oil painting, watercolor, and some digital painting. It's really going to be amazing and a lot of fun. I can't wait. And I hope to see you there. My next guest was a pleasure to talk to. I've been online friends with Walter for 12 or more years, have nothing but admiration and respect for his work. From his character work to his character design and so much more, he can do it all. Like me, Walter is also an instructor for Schoolism.com. He has an amazing course on character design, and he's working on a second class that will be available soon. It was great to finally talk to him face-to-face. Unfortunately, the Skype recording didn't work, so I don't have video of Walter and I, but at least I was able to record the audio. So in its place, I'm sharing a video that I filmed of myself doing a gouache painting of Darwin. I hope you enjoy. So please welcome Walter Kolb. And cool, uh, we're rolling, man. So, yeah. Wooter, is that? Am I saying your name right? By the way, I've known you for like years. Is <laughs> is it Wooter or Wouter or how do you say your it, name? <laughs> it's Wouter. Wouter. Okay, that sounds yes. way cooler. Wouter. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've been friends, like online friends, for what at least twelve or more years or something. I, I don't know. It's been a while. Well, um, yeah, I I think. It's really cool, you know. First of all, thanks for having me on the podcast. Yeah, it's, thank it's you for really, for being on it, man. Great. <laughs> yeah, it's a great honor, especially, you know, coming after some of my heroes like Steve Brodner, Anita Kuntz. You know, I've I've well, known these people since I started out when yeah when there wasn't even you know f- Facebook didn't even exist at the time, <laughs> yeah. and and I, I've been following these people for so long, and you know, it's it's really so cool to to you know to hear them talk about their art and uh so well thank you and and also yeah. you know so cool to to find this first time we actually talk yeah <laughs> and you know it, it feels like our careers started about the same time and uh, you know and we met online so long ago already but we never yeah. met in person yeah and and it's so funny because we've we've been in touch every now and then yeah. And uh, it's been such a long journey, so it's it's really funny to to finally yeah. you know speak with you. So. Yes, I feel the same way, and I and I really appreciate you coming on to do this. This is awesome. I mean, it it is interesting. Like, I mean, uh, and and you know, and now we you know we we first met. I think I mean back in the day, we were both like like really doing the whole blog thing, and I think that's when we first met. And um, you yeah. know, I had like a, a, a great respect for what I was seeing you do, and then. I remember, um, I remember the first time I went to your website. I was like, "Oh, this, this, this is this is my people, man. This guy is awesome, you know." And then, uh, you know, and eventually, now we're both Thanks. teachers at Schoolism, which is really cool. And um, and uh, we can talk a little bit about that as well because I'd love to promote your class and stuff too. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it is awesome to finally talk to you. It's been a long time, man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. hopefully, one of these days we'll be able to uh, bump into each other at some event or something. Who knows? Yeah. Oh, but, um, maybe Lightbox. <laughs> are you oh, going there? Oh, wait, where, where, where is, I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> What's what Lightbox? Lightbox it's, it's it's Bobby Chu's uh, event. Oh yes, yes, yes. I do know. I told. I forgot about okay. that. But yes, um, that's happening next fall, right? I think. I, uh, September, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'm planning on going to that. I would really love to be there. That would be really cool. Yeah, man. Um, that sounds that sounds amazing. 
Um, oh yeah, it's going to be amazing. Just tons of artists um, doing live painting and demonstrations yeah. and stuff. It's going to be really cool. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Um, so you know, there's a there's a lot that we can talk about um, with your work and everything. And I'm just curious, just because you know, I you know. We, there's similarities, you know, we both, are, you know, do caricature illustration and that's that, that kind of stuff. But you, you do a lot more uh, like character design um, and uh, you do you do plein air painting, you do portrait painting. So you, you, you definitely, um, you know, you're, you're my kind of artist. You're out there just exploring the different mediums. And, and um, I remember some of the first digital paintings you started doing, you were like, I'm trying this out now. And so, it, it, you know, it's just it's pretty cool. Um, when 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 did you start getting into character design and caricature type work? Um, character design and caricature, mm -hmm. because I I, I mean, um, you know, caricature is something that I've done from the age of ten, I think. Yeah. At the time, uh, my dad, he is an artist. At the time, he was working at an office. And he was doing caricatures of his co-workers. Mm. And F so when, when he came home after hours, he would just do these pencil drawings. And uh, they just blew me away. They were so good. And, uh, you know, I, I just went to him and asked him, you know, because he used pencil and paper, which was what I was drawing with. Yeah. And I couldn't couldn't believe how he who could make the hair of, of someone look so greasy or, or or you know when someone was wearing glasses they really looked like they were made of glass or, or wrinkles and everything so uh oh, that's you know, awesome I, yeah it, w it was cool and and you know and like you know i don't know if everyone has this but when i see someone draw i'm just mesmerized just so when i saw him do that that was just amazing so yeah. uh, i i asked him you know could you could you explain how you do this and he would teach me these these techniques of of you know how light hits the surface and and you create this this little ridge where a shadow goes and cross hatching <laughs> and all that and you know and i would try and i would cry because you know i couldn't <laughs> do it especially you know when yeah. you see someone doing such great caricatures and and then you try and and doesn't work but i think you know that's one of the things in art that it's really a challenge with yourself you know it's not a contest or anything but you you will find your own boundaries and at the same time it's so rewarding when you when you are doing something you have never done before when you surprise yourself so uh, at the time, I already did caricatures of, of my classmates, and uh, that has been a natural thing for me to to do. You know, I, I never yeah. <laughs> thought about it as, as a as a decision. Now I'm going to do caricatures. That was just something <clears throat> I saw. Uh, my dad had this book of uh, David Levine. Yes, Levine. I don't you know, know. You know, it's really you kind of creeping me out a little bit, just to be honest, because like this is exactly the same thing with me, because. I was the same age that you were that you started out, and my dad is an artist. And my I would watch my dad draw, and I would be you know like you said, mem just mesmerized by it, and just um, and and I would I would spend hours crying because I couldn't do it, and I was <laughs> so frustrated. And you know, and I started just naturally doing caricature as well. I just started drawing my classmates and different people. And I thought that I came up with the art form. Like I, I thought it was something because, <laughs> okay, because cool. like I just, I just was naturally drawing that way. And then my dad bought me the book by David Levine. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and wow. and um, I know what's funny is I didn't read the book for a, for a couple of years. All I did was flip through it and I just copied everything that I saw. Mm. And I, and I just, I learned so much just by copying the drawings. And then I remember mm. one day I actually. You know, a couple years after I had it, I started reading through it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I should have read this a while ago. This, this is way <laughs> pretty help. You know, this is helpful. Um, but anyways, it, that's amazing because like we literally have the same exact um, yeah, trajectory that, there. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. And my dad's a wow. you know very big plein air painter, and so I've I you know I started getting into that. And but um, that's interesting, man. And when when you uh, when you were um, you know in high school and everything, and you, did you go to art school right away after you graduated? Um, or did you go to art school? Yes, I did. But, you know, uh, it's hard for me to talk about the art school I went to and not 
going into a rant. <laughs> you know, it, it well, you know, basically it, what I'm interested because I don't want to be negative or yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. But let let's say I was more ambitious than what the school had to offer. Yes, so I, I can um, relate to that as well. And, um, and also, you know, the the fact that I the, uh, I did illustration, and it's funny that the way they uh, treated illustration was as, as if it was conceptual art. So, oh, okay. you know, caricature, I wasn't allowed to do caricatures or, or yeah. I wasn't allowed there to do no children's books. There was no respect books. for it. Not at all. You yeah, know, I was ridiculous. almost expelled because I wanted to do that. And it's funny because wow. the first things that, uh, you know, the first jobs I had that made money were caricatures and children's books, you know. Yeah. So, it, I, um, I, you know, it's, it's not it, – the, the best thing about that experience was really being among other students who also were passionate about drawing. And it gave me four years of, of you know, spending all my time drawing without having to worry about having a job or anything. You know, that was yeah. just my time. So uh, I took advantage of the fact that I could draw all the time. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very familiar as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I went to art school for two years, but I mostly just did my, my, you know, gen eds, my science classes and essay writing, history classes. And I had like, you know, I had some side classes like you know, had, you know, life drawing and, and that sort of a thing. But um, yeah, I ended up quitting after a couple of years because I just I, I just realized I'm, I just need to get into my my work. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but uh, yeah, that's cool. So when you uh, so one of the, some of the first things that you started doing was children's books, um, like right right off the bat, you started getting yeah. into that. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and well, it, you know, when I started out was uh, 2002. So uh, you know, there was the internet, but not not at all like it is now. Yeah. And so uh, you know what the few you know the industry looked like for me was it was all within the netherlands and mm -hmm. this is such a small country so you know i i traveled the country with with my big portfolio and and actual paintings and i went to publishers and and, and magazines and any everything where i thought you know they might want to hire me yeah and uh, you know part of the fact that i do so many different things is that you you may have to be a jack of all trades in this country to make a living because you know there is no big industry where you can specialize. You have to take everything mm -hmm. uh, be because it's just a small industry. That's one part, but because there are illustrators who are doing really one thing. I think it's also, you know, part of my nature. You know, I think what I love about drawing is is really to learn, to explore, and and when I think yeah. of art, it's it's to me, I like to learn the principles of, of drawing and painting. And when I understand those, I just want to figure out what I can do with this. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to limit myself to one type of art. And, you know, the, the hard part about it sometimes is that I, I myself don't know, you know, <laughs> what am I actually creating? What, what, what is my uh, vision as an artist? Because I'm all over the place. But, yeah. you know, it's, it's something that I've tried to fight in the past and it's just you know this is just me so maybe i specialize in you know i think sometimes specialization is something that's talked about often and it i think it works commercially you know if you if you uh, say well i'm i'm uh, i'm a caricature artist this is all i do yeah and you create a portfolio no the client is paying for something that doesn't exist yet so he wants to know what you're going what he's going to get so commercially that works and for that reason you know i i chose the path of doing character design and that works for me because it's it's really a conceptual uh art form where you can try a lot of different things so within that i can really do a lot of things that i love but then still yeah. i lo love to go out and paint and 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 do caricatures and portraits and um i for me it's really about learning and and trying to to see what else is there. So mm -hmm. I, I don't want to limit myself in advance. Yeah. No, and that makes perfect sense too. I mean, I mean, the, what I think, one thing I really admire about what you do too is just that, you know, you, um, you know, when you're not working on, you know, commission type work, you're, you're out there practicing, you know, you're painting and you're doing sketches and everything. And, um, you know, that's, that's a, that's the mark of a true artist, you know, because the, the thing is, is we should never, ever want to put our crayons away. You know, we should always no. want to explore, try new things. Um, 
you know, and that's one thing that's one that's cool about your character design. I really like your character design a lot, and and I think that what's what's so good about it is because you have such a knowledge of caricature, of how to push the form and expression and the emotion. And I see that in your character design. It's it's all over the place. Just the the movement and the bodies and everything. Um, even in that last the last piece that you just did for the Washington Examiner, I really love what you did with that cover. Um, oh, thanks. There, I love my favorite part about it is, you know. One of the hardest things about doing this kind of work is, one, they only give you a couple days to do it. <laughs> and you, so you have to, um, you, if, for me anyways, I would love if I had a little bit more time to come up with the idea and play around with, you know, do a bunch of sketches and, and hey, what if we do this? What if we, but you don't sometimes get that luxury mm. in this business. Yeah. You have to just, hey, we need a sketch this afternoon and you have to start painting tomorrow. Um, yeah. And so... The one thing I really loved about that cover that you did was was just the composition and the positioning of how you put Pelosi where you did and just that swing and that movement, the, the body movement. And so you're you're obviously doing a caricature illustrated cover, but now you're 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 using your character design knowledge to like pull it all together mm -hmm. to make it feel animated and, and movement and um, and then just the placement of where Trump on the other side, it's just it was hilarious. Like your your eye your <laughs> eye flows and um, it was a really cool piece. I really, I, I, it was refreshing to see a piece like oh, that. Thank you so much. Because I don't, there's not very much um, caricature art out there being published. Um, there's, there's not as much as there was like years ago. Um, and there's not a lot for me where I'm like, oh man, that's kick ass. That's awesome. Um, every once in a while, there, you know, like like Victor, uh, who was uh, Steve Brodner, like the, those th those guys are heroes of mine. Um, but you know, it, it, so anyways, the cover you did was one of those covers where I was like, yeah, that's awesome, dude. Like I got, oh, thank you so I, got much. I got pumped that when I saw really it means a lot coming from you. Yeah, that was, it was really cool. And, um, and I even liked how you handled Trump, um, because you know, there's so many people that are drawing Trump now and the way that you did it was, was an original take on it. It, it just, you know, it just, it looked natural. I just liked the, the, um, the, the way that he, even his little arms and, and, uh, <laughs> and I like how you, you know, you 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 simplified um even the, the way you painted him like the hair is just a few you know, like brush strokes and it kind it kind of pissed me off a little bit just because um <laughs> cuz like I just got recently did one with Trump and and um and I spent so long on the hair cuz I wanted it to just I wanted to capture that greasy matty thing that he combs yeah, the side yeah, yeah. and then you you captured basically the same thing in a few brush strokes and I was like god damn it <laughs> <laughs> Walter how <laughs> dare you? <laughs> well, it was funny. I saw this piece by uh, Thomas Fluharty. Yeah. And he, uh, I, I, he posted recently, and I, I, I said uh, as a comment, you know, you probably used auto paint to do the hair because he, he had all these, these, oh, you know, yeah. these <laughs> lines going all over the place. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, his hair is, is something else. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what's great, too, is like we get to, as artists, in, interpret our own version, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's so, it's so much, and that's the one thing, um, the only thing that I like about Donald Trump is drawing him because <laughs> he is, he's a lot yeah. of, he's a lot of fun to draw. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. and, uh, I get like, I get really excited when someone calls me to, 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 to like when I did the time piece recently, the, the, the most exciting thing for me was that, so I've, I've done work for time before, but I've never been asked to do a caricature for their magazine mm -hmm. and so right away i was like this is awesome this is so cool <laughs> because it's not normal they haven't they haven't done a caricature mm -hmm. for their covers for years um and so it just got me super pumped to be able to play with like i get to draw donald trump this is so cool yeah, man yeah. um because it's it's one of those things where i know it, it might not happen again for a while you know um but it's so much fun and, and uh, that's the one thing i i loved about that piece was that like there was, you, you could tell that you were having a blast when you were working on it. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It looks well, really that, fun. With the time cover, I, I, I like that a lot because it, you know, you drew Trump, but it's just the back of his head and it's still a <laughs> caricature that has such great likeness. You know, that's, that's oh. so cool. You know, it's funny. I um, appreciate that. Thank you. But what's funny is I, I, a lot of people were writing me saying, Man, it's so amazing. It's so you can see you can still tell it's him from that view. And for me, it was like it was just that was actually really easy because I didn't have to. I didn't have much time, and I and I didn't have to focus on painting his face. 
you know, mm. so that, that actually yeah. saved me on time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I was trying to make him look like a little boy, kind of. Um, you know, he's sitting up there like, I mean, originally my idea was I was going to try to caricature his body more, but then I realized that that wasn't the vision of the cover. You know, they, they mm-hmm. wanted him to kind of be like a little boy sitting on a ledge and, you know. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the thing. I, I saw those sketches you, you posted earlier. And uh, that's the thing, you know, uh, same with the cover I did, you know, you, you have to, it's not just do, do this drawing that you want to do, you know, you have the yeah. idea that, that they want to work with, but also, you know, the, ti- the, the, the title of the magazine and where all the text is coming. And then also you have to come up with an idea that, that they like yeah. and, and you have to go back and forth and then put that in a composition that also visually works because, you know, for example, the, the cover I did, one of the things i had to uh you know work with is that we have to see both their faces and she's yeah. she's acting against him so it would make much more sense if we see the back of of, of nancy pelosi and yeah. that cover <laughs> but you know so i had to come up with a pose that it still feels natural for her to basically swipe you know behind her so it, yeah. it's it, that, and that then was... <laughs> also fit that all into the into the composition of the magazine so that, you know it's yeah. a, it's a challenge and that was great that, you know, that's, that's, that's one thing that is cool about this kind of work is sometimes you get put in this position where you have to, you have to kind of force yourself to think outside the box. Like, okay, how am I going to make this work? Cause sometimes art directors and editors say things to you that you, you just like, this doesn't make sense. Why would you want to do it this way? But you, you have to do it that way. You know, are either like the text is going to be in a certain place and you have to work around yeah. that text and that sort of a thing. So, um, it definitely, um, encourages you know, us as artists to like, okay, hold on. How, this is what they want. And I got to, I have to deliver this. Now, how am I going to do it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so, but yeah, you, it was awesome, dude. It was really cool to see that. Thanks. Um, and, and I also, that's what I also love about working for clients instead of do, you no, know, I also love doing personal work, but working for clients, you, you know, you get these challenges that I would never set a challenge like that for myself. But yeah. To have to do this for a client makes you, you know, it, it really challenges your creativity as an artist and, mm-hmm. and you learn so much from it. Yeah, exactly. How did you um, um, how did you find, you know, being that you're in the Netherlands? Um, how do you how do you how is it when you're working on a deadline like that for someone in D.C. Um, as, far, as far as the timing goes and all that stuff? Did it work out OK or was there any complications that you had to deal with? No, that that wasn't a problem at all. We oh, just okay. had our, our our time window where we could communicate, and then uh, I think they, uh, I I went to sleep. They get got to work, and the other way around. So <laughs> that that works yeah. fine. Oh, okay, cool. So you didn't have like le- any less time, um, you know, than no, normal probably. Not okay. that I know of. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> That's good. Huh. Um, did you? Um, this is your first time working with Philip, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, an awesome. It was funny be- he's great. because it. Sorry. He re- replied to a, a message I sent him ten years ago. <laughs> uh, ten years ago, I, I sent these, uh, you know, these these mailers. Uh, you know, I'm a caricature artist, and I want to work for you. And yeah. you know, ten years later, he calls me. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just have to be patient. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, you know, um, what's funny is so I've worked with Philip for. Man, I, I think I started my first. I think my first piece was 2006 or 2007. One of the one of those, and um, he is hands down my favorite art director I've ever worked with. He's a great. Mm-hmm. He's got good ideas. Um, he's a fan of of art, and he respects artists. So he's really really great to work with. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's it's crazy because like w- w- with the Weekly Standard. Um, you know, for, I, I, I did tons of covers. Tom's did tons of covers for them. Um, and it's kind of one of those things where we, we worked with him for so many years doing those covers and just like kind of building this relationship and this friendship um, and this trust, you know, like I, I trust his decisions on things and how we're going to do, you know, like, for example, um, well, before I go back um, and the reason I was, I was bringing this up is, you know, I, I was so bummed when the Weekly Standard ended. Um, because mm. mostly because I, I was, I'm going to miss working with Philip. He's, he's an awesome art director. Um, and it was always fun. I always enjoyed working on, on those projects, but then, uh, the Washington examiner, it's basically the weekly standard, um, with just different people running it. 
um, and then he became the art director. And so uh, it was so exciting <laughs> when I got mm. to do the first yeah. one uh, for them. Uh, and but the thing was, is he wasn't he wasn't working for them yet. And so, um, you know, I'm working with some of the same people from the Weekly Standard, but they, you know, there wasn't really much art direction at first. Um, okay. Um, I mean, there was, but it, w- it was kind of very loose. And so we didn't know, um, like, for example, I didn't know where text was going to go or anything. And so I kind of just did the idea that they were saying. Um, and then Philip got brought on and he's like, hey, don't, you know, he kind of like hacked up my 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 background characters a little bit and moved it so because he, you know he had he knew where the text was going to be and everything okay. and so it was kind of a weird way to go about the, laying it out <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. but he came in and, and and saved it and made it look okay. cool and everything that's cool but but that's that's why he's he's great he knows he knows exactly what's going on and so i'm really happy that he's working with them now it's going to be and mm-hmm. hopefully they you know uh, so far they use tom and you and me um i have no idea who they're doing this week but it would be really cool if, if we got to be on a rotation. Oh yeah. It would be like, like what I love about that idea is you start to feed off each other and you start to like, Oh yeah. Like, Oh man. Okay. Absolutely. I love that last cover you did next time. I'm going to like bring it. I'm going to, you know what I mean? And it's, yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah. a fun, healthy way to push each other and, and that oh, sort of yes, thing. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I loved about the Weekly Standard because it was me and it was Gary Locke and Tom Fluharty. And every mm. once in a while, they'd put, they'd put someone else in there. But it was always like, you know, when Tom would do a cover, I'd be like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> you, know, now, you know, and then oh, I, I got cool. to try to bring it, bring my game, you know, the next time, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. It's fun. Um, you, you have any, uh, any uh, current projects right now that you're working on that you're um, excited about? Oh, or. Uh, uh, well, I'm actually working on a new schoolism course. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's a, a lot of work, mm-hmm. um, but it, it's it's going to be fun. You know, um, it's going to be about the the conceptual part of character design. Oh, so, awesome. Uh, you know, how, you know I, I, and I think it works both ways that I, a lot of people ask me, where do you get your ideas? Mm-hmm. But also from the industry, uh, I learned that it's basically about the ideas, you know, yeah. the fact, you no, know, you need to know how to draw, but that's a given, but knowing how to draw is nothing if, if you don't have clever ideas and, and you need ideas to, to bring the project to the next level. So, uh, mm-hmm. that's basically what I, I'm taking apart the, the thought process that goes into character design. So that was, that's what I'm working on right now. And, uh, I've recorded that's awesome. half, half the course, and uh still got a long way to go <laughs> yeah that's awesome man um and your your first course we might as well talk about that um your first course is on character design right um, yes like the yes. it's about uh, the ex- expressive characters so it's really about you know uh no a lot of courses are about you know drawing the characters designing the characters this is really about you know how to bring life to them you know how, how to create the, this dynamic that when a character walks it really feels that he's moving or when he lifts something you feel the weight so you really you know get the expression in, in the character that's awesome that's really cool um how long have you been it, doing that course for by the way um two or three years oh, okay some, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm sh- I, I know a lot of people that submitted some drawings of you have taken your cl- your class because they're, lot, they're all cool. like, yeah, I took his class. It was so awesome. So um, you probably oh, cool. recognize some of the names. <laughs> um, oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's um, it's it's really cool. Schoolism is one of those those uh, awesome opportunities, you know, for for people out there to take. Like, there's so many different courses available, um, and uh, it's 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 really cool. I mean. For me personally, teaching uh, a couple classes there, I I always learn a lot, you know, from teaching. You know, I start to oh, learn, yeah. you know. And, oh, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, when it's, you teach, you really have to, to take apart your own process and, and yeah. you know, mm-hmm. see what actually am I doing. And yeah. just to, to sit down and, and, you know, analyze that already, uh, you learn so much from that. And, all, and then also every time, you know, a student submits work and you're looking at it and you have to figure out, you know, if, if this isn't working, why isn't it working? And what would I do to, to yeah. improve it? Yep. To be honest, actually, <laughs> exactly. it's one, one of the, the things I do and I, I never show uh, because I, you know, it's just for me. Uh, but I, 
uh, I regularly take uh, images offline, you know, from, from the internet when I see artwork. And this could be from, from you know, great artists or, or students who, who just start out. Uh, and then, but it, it's got to be a work of art where I think, you know, I like it, but I think it could be better or this isn't working. And I give myself five minutes to fix it. And it's just an exercise for me. And it, yeah. it can be any, you know, it can be character, it can be a landscape, it can, it can be anything. But, you know, it's for me, it's an exercise to to figure out if something isn't working, what would I do if I really had a limited amount of time to, to fix this painting or this drawing? Yeah. And uh, so I, I never show it because I, 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 it's not meant to offend anyone who did that work, <laughs> but, yeah, but it's, it's a great exercise. And, and uh, so, <laughs> you know, even if you're not teaching, you can do that same thing uh, oh, man. Where, you, where you have to figure out what, what's happening in, in a work. I think that's genius. That's, that's an amazing, you hear that folks? Try doing that because that's that's an amazing thing right there. What you said that's really cool, but uh, I, I I was when you were saying that I started having like this <laughs> this vision in my mind of 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 you like hey here's this shitty painting I found online <laughs> and uh, I, I gave myself five minutes to fix it <laughs> you know and, okay yeah and then the artist is that's like why I don't post you know, them. Oh, you know? <laughs> that's so funny man no one that's will awesome. ever know yeah that's <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. That's so good. Um, wow, that's so cool. So you know, what? I'm for me. Uh, I love I love your work, and um, I, when I think back to the, some of the first pieces I saw that you did, um, you know, I started off as a painter. I started. Um, I'm, I'm a self-taught painter, um, and I had, of course, Sebastian uh, Kruger was a big influence um, when I when I found his work. I was just like damn, that's exactly what I was wanting to do, you know? Mm. Um, and so I started <laughs> teaching myself how to paint with acrylics and, you know, it was, it was brutal, you know, it, it was very hard at first. Um, yeah. uh, and I started very, very, uh, I started very thin, almost like watercolors at first and just kind of started to slowly build my confidence with the medium to where I could start to, to paint or opaque. And I started to, to teach myself about values and, and just the more you paint, the more you realize, oh, soft edges and mm -hmm. and contrast and temperature and all these different things. And um, and it's a huge journey, you know, to, to teach oh, yourself yeah. how to paint and everything. And uh, so, so some of your your paintings from way back when I first saw your work, I was just like, oh, man, it's awesome. He's doing, you know, he's he like the like um, I remember your, your that Beatles piece with the four heads together mm -hmm. um, and uh, the. Uh, you know, at the Marilyn Monroe, and there's a few pieces like I think a Jim Carrey that was really awesome. Um, but I really respect it, and, and you know your use of of uh, you know values and colors and your brushwork, and also your con control over the medium because it is a tricky medium. I oh, think yeah. I think uh, you did a few gouache pieces as well. But um, uh, when you started, uh, when you were working, when we started doing that kind of work traditionally, um, did you right away? Uh, jump into acrylics or were you influenced by another artist where you're like I'm trying to you know I like what that person's doing I'm going to try to teach myself how to paint that way um, well at the time I uh, I was just out of art school I think and uh, no one worked digi digitally at the time yeah. you know, everyone painted and, and we just used acrylics because it, it was easy because it dries so fast and, and you, yeah. you could send it uh, the same day if, if you needed to so that was just out of convenience so yeah so you basically just you like I, this is the most convenient medium to use yeah um, and when you started um, uh, working like for example like the, some of the first caricatures that you started painting um, what what was your what, what what was your goal with with what you were trying to do artistically like you know like I don't know if that makes sense but basically mm -hmm. when I saw your work I was like, okay, this guy clearly has a vision, and he is he he knows where he's going to go with it. Um, your your work had more, or it has more of a um, a plan, if you know, like I, mm -hmm. it's not just thrown together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and I, that's the feeling I get. Like the, your work seems very thought out to me, um, and and uh, I was just wondering what your process kind of is, even when you're just doing the the painting, the acrylic stuff. Uh, well, basically, you know, I I felt I they didn't teach me what I wanted in art school. So when I finished art school, 
I started working and I used my, my, you know, the jobs that I had to teach myself. And it, whether it was children's books or caricatures or, you know, the caricatures you mentioned, they were personal work. They, but, but then still, uh, every uh, work of art that I did, I tried to set a challenge for myself. So, yeah. for example, uh, the Marilyn Monroe, I was learning about values. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I tried there was, okay, what happens if... Uh, conceptually, you know, if, uh, you know, M Marilyn Monroe, uh, you know, if you would have to uh, uh, visualize her and just the face, mm -hmm. you know, you have the lips, the mole and, and the eyes. Those are the things that really pop out instantly. So yeah. what if I use values to, to bring those out and have everything in values that are really closer together? So what I uh, started to learn was that you know, values is not only something that you see and you reproduce, but you can also play with it. You know, you can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you paint a landscape, you can push the levels in the back, uh, the values in the background really close together. So you push the atmospheric perspective. Yeah, exactly. And you get much more depth doing that. But I also tried doing the opposite just to see, you know, if you are incapable of, of using values, that may happen. And most, in most cases, it's values, you know, really high contrast all over the place. <laughs> but you you can also deliberately choose to do the opposite. So I did this painting of uh, Charlie Parker where I, I mixed all those principles. So I, I used the principles that everyone learns, uh, but, you know, the pianist in the foreground was out of focus. And then uh, I uh, the bass player in the background was really big, and the the saxophone player had really big hands, but uh, had really uh, high values. And then the drummer in the background was was uh, really yeah. in in focus, but that wasn't the point of interest. So I was just mixing all those principles and just to figure out, you know, how can I use them mm -hmm. in another way? And so uh, a lot of times I'm just challenging myself to see, you know. I, I learned these principles, but and and not just uh, to uh, to challenge myself doing something else. I was just learning to paint. I, I remember, you know, uh, earlier than that, my uh, uh, my shadows were mixed with black. You know, shadows are dark, so I mixed them with black. And yeah. all those paintings, they <clears throat> were really like the the early Van Gogh paintings. You know, dark and brown, and then. There was this day where I woke up and I looked at the shadow under my bed and I thought, oh, that's blue. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this was really a eureka moment. And I was, yeah. you know, I was high on colors for the next two weeks. And uh, people were looking at me when I was out in the street looking under cars to see what the color of the shadow was. You know, I was totally yeah. crazy. But I, I was like, wow, this is, you know, you can't just by uh, diving into this uh uh what do you, how do you call it you know just immersing yourself into art and and trying to understand you know what observation is how what, you know there are so many different ways that you can look at at things and that is just fascinating you know there's always another approach i was uh i was looking at this picture uh i took at the nsc festival and it was just a a, a picture of a french village and there was a mountain and a cloud, and in the foreground we saw a, a, a woman who, who was getting married and a photographer taking a picture. It was accidentally in my picture, and there was a bike. And I was just looking at that picture, and then I thought, okay, when you look at that picture and you ask people to describe what they see, they'll probably mention all the things that I said. But then <laughs> I thought, okay, what if I was a weatherman looking at that picture? I would probably look at the clouds, and I would probably yeah. – be able to predict what kind of weather it's going to be. Or if I would be a, a photographer, I would look at, you know, I would focus on the photographer taking a picture of the of the woman who's getting married and I'd probably see what kind of uh, gear he's he's using. Or if I w was a thief, I would look at the bike and I, how can I steal it? You know, mm -hmm. there is so much in that image that you only when you start really looking in different ways you see it and, and with yeah. art it's the it's the very same thing you know you can just look at you know sit in the landscape and you can start painting what you see or you can do a caricature you can uh, take a photo and just paint what you see and usually we do what everyone's doing and 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 it looks like 
the photo and it's rendered. Mm -hmm. And you can also think, okay, what if I focus on everything in the in that image that is vertical? What, what stands out then? And and you know you have suddenly yeah. you have a completely different approach. And I'm just fascinating by that because it, you know, it expands the way you can can look at things and it gives you ideas of you know how you can bring out something that you see and i think that's mm -hmm. what yeah. artists do you know they they see something that other people don't see and they use their art to bring that out and when you see it you know you get and it works you you get that feeling like hey i i know this person or i know this feeling or mm -hmm. uh, i i've been through that or you know and well it's you, like it's like music too you know you hear a certain song with lyrics and it'll impact everybody in a different way you know because Absolutely. of what your your own life experiences are like and that sort of a thing i mean my yeah. um uh i don't know if you've seen that in that new movie um a star is born with lady gaga and um not yet no um Bradley Cooper. It's a really, really good movie. It's probably my favorite movie of the year. And uh, my wife didn't get to see it because she, you know, we, it's for, for months, you know, the baby's, you know, getting bigger. And so, but she's basically can't mm. be away from her mom <laughs> for like, oh, wow. like, you know, for not very much oh, time. Must be tough for her. So, yeah. So she's sort of, you know, got cabin fever. And um, I, I took my daughter to see the movie, my, my 15 year old, and we loved it. So for the last couple months, I've been telling her about the movie and, and, um, and, you know, how, and the movie impacted me a certain way because, you know, I used to be in bands and I've got lots of friends in bands. And so I relate with a lot of the, 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 the filming and the acting and the different things that happen in the movie. And then she watches the movie. Finally, it's, it's, it's available now. And within the first, like, 10 minutes of the movie, she's crying. She's like, oh, like wow. and, and, and I'm like, what are you, why, why are you <laughs> sad right now? But it things that happened in the movie were hitting her in a diff completely yeah. different way for different experiences that she's had in her life, you know? And yeah. I think, I think that's what's interesting and awesome about art in general is that, um, what even, even character design uh, and caricature, um, it can, th those mediums can still be very powerful and, and you, you can use those to really, um, you know, affect people's emotions. Like, a, like, a, like, like oh, yeah. Donald Trump, probably saw your cover and got pissed off <laughs> you know you probably yes. caused donald trump to, to be like i don't like this voter guy okay voter no 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 you know like oh, man. you know and I, I but that's what's awesome about art in general you know and, and i relate complete with what you're saying um it's 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 so weird i find myself a lot of times just being distracted by the weirdest thing that I see, like a shadow or, you know, they're, they're like I was on a walk with my dog in, in the park nearby and it was in the fall and I just stood next to this tree and just I got lost because I couldn't mm -hmm. believe the colors that I, I was seeing in the oh, leaves. Wow. And then I was just sitting there and I was like, like in my mind, like, well, how would I paint that? Like, how would yeah. I? And, and I just realized that I've been here for like 15 minutes staring uh -huh. at a tree, Wow! you know, and, yeah. and, but that kind of thing happens or like you see a reflection in a puddle and it just takes you somewhere. And um, I think it's brilliant how you put that because it really, you know, it really does, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it, as an artist, um, if we can try to put all of that into our work, you know, it's just, yeah. it's just, um, it's awesome, man. And uh, I mean, it's really cool too, because you know, like with, with you, you do plein air painting and um, you do portrait work, you do caricature work, you do illustration, all this kind of stuff. So you've got, you know, you're, you're, you're giving yourself basically um, like you've got your own playground, you know, <laughs> where you're, you're not going to because there is there are yeah. artists that just do the one thing and that's it. Um, you know, professionally, I, I mostly do portrait and caricature work. Um, I've done some character design. I love it. But, man, I love drawing animals. I love drawing uh, birds and fish. And I love, you know, exploring or pushing or sometimes challenging myself to draw something I've never drawn before. Um, I, 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 you know, <laughs> plein air painting is one of those things where I, I, I kind of consider plein air painting sort of a, a school um, from a personal schooling for me because it is so frustrating sometimes and stressful mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah. and it kicks your butt every single time. I mean, for me, it's yes. like, cause the lighting is constantly changing. Yeah. Um, not only do you have to try to come up with a, a, a good composition, but you're, you're, you're like 
in in a competition with you know the sun basically yeah 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 and uh and, and it, you have to come up with a with an idea <laughs> right there right now yeah. and and execute it at the same yeah. time it's, and if and you you can't chase the sun because you, you keep changing the lighting and the light you're, you're just yeah. gonna you're you know and then the bugs will bite you and different things and you're just like ah you know but yeah. i love it because at the same time it makes you a, a better artist when you go through that and you oh, put yeah. yourself in that struggle um you walk away you know a better artist for it you know yes and it's and it's also a matter of you know uh using all that happens because um you know you can be frustrated about the fact that the sun is changing but at the same time you get all these different uh scenes in front of you and you can pick the best parts to create your yeah, painting yep. because it will it won't be a snapshot of of one single moment you know yeah. you will be there for two three hours so you know, you can pick the the best parts to make the best painting. Yeah, I I I, uh, I get frustrated. Some, you know, I've I've gone with my dad several times. He's really good at plein air painting. Um, he's very quick. And um, the one thing I I learned that that very thing that you just said from my dad because, you know, the first couple times I tried it, I was trying to just capture the scene. You know. But then it kept changing, and and every and I was just like, oh, this is. And then you know, <laughs> by the by the time you know they're they're there for a couple hours, the sun is no longer there; it's over there now, mm -hmm. and everything's different. Um, uh. And then I, I would just watch my dad, and he would he would just basically say, yeah, I, I take you know I take a picture in my mind of you know this is what's going to be, and I, I choose the kind of palette. Now he like premixes certain palettes, and he just sticks with that. And and the other thing I noticed. Um, he does is he kind of exaggerates he'll exaggerate the color a lot um, but where he wants your eye to go and different things so he's he, he looks at a scene but he creates his own scene you know mm -hmm. based off and and that's I didn't at first I didn't look at it that way I was like oh you're you're sitting there and you're trying to just cap paint the scene it's like no you're being influenced and yes you know well, that's that's you know you I feel yeah story story about that I uh, I attended a, a Planner, uh, a portrait painting course by Jeremy Lipking. Oh, and he was he was in the Netherlands. That's and awesome. One day they uh, he went out to do a landscape painting, and you know there was a model in the field and he was painting the model, and then at a certain point he just stood up and walked for, you know, uh, you know I don't know, it, it's 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 two hundred meters. I don't know what that is in oh, in, 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 in feet <laughs> or anything. Uh, but you know, he just walked over the hill and and just looked in the distance. And then he came back and he, he painted what he remembered when he saw, looked over the hill, because oh. that wasn't wasn't in the background. And he just put it in there. And, I, and what I thought was really interesting that some people got really upset that he did <laughs> that because you know that wasn't in front of him. And I thought it was really clever because in the end, yeah. no one's going to ever see that scene in real life. And it's not yeah. about that scene in real life. You know, it's about the painting. And he wants to communicate a certain feeling in that painting. Yeah, and exactly. He, he's, he's a designer. So he picks and he's inspired by what he sees to make the best painting. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, no, it's no use just literally copying what you see without emotion. You know, you have to feel something with it. Yeah, I mean, it's like if anybody out there that's that's listening that wants to ch uh, challenge or push themselves definitely try doing plein air painting because it is you know i, I personally kind of you know, it's funny because i've done it a few times where i go my dad will go to like a creek or whatever and my wife she's a painter as well and we'll both we'll all set up easels and all wall paint um i i kind of uh you know cert I, i'm not like a big fan of painting trees um and so I, I can I get really bored with that, <laughs> but like I found like even if you know if that's not your thing, um, one thing that was that I love doing is is painting scenes like urban scenes like in a city, mm -hmm. um, like yeah. a, like a old bridge and different things like that. But but the the point is is getting out there, if, from life and painting things, um, uh, it's going to kick your ass, but it's also going to help you become a better artist, you know. And um, yeah. and that's how cool is that that you got to paint with Jeremy Lipking, man. That guy is. Oh yeah. He's I love his yes. work so much. Yes. He's, he's yes. such a cool guy. It's amazing. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, his the way he uses green, um, mm -hmm. how he can control green the way he does is um, super inspiring. I I I'll, yeah. He's he's one of those artists where I'll look at his work and just be like, dang man, that's there's so much. The guy is just a, he's a genius, man. He's really awesome. Oh yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And the way he paints skin. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yes. And, and, and when you, when you look at his paintings and you see the compositions, you know, it's not just painted beautifully but it you know the whole thing is balanced in yeah. such a beautiful way it, it you know it really takes a lot of knowledge to to put a painting together like that oh yeah have you ever um do you know who richard schmidt is yes because yes. i think yeah he's he's another one of those painters that um i love his looseness and sometimes he kind of leaves things very sketchy in certain areas but there's such a movement and life to it um yeah yeah he's one of those another painter that i just i can just look at his work for a long time you know <laughs> yeah and you can tell it, 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 with his work as well that you know it's an interpretation of life because when when two people would do a landscape when you look at his work he has all these these tiny dots of, of really bright colors in there and you know yeah. that's a personal way of of looking at things and and translating that into his art and you know i probably wouldn't pick a, a bright purple in in into the yeah. green grass landscape but he does that and suddenly it you know it, it turns to life so yeah that's amazing it, but that's that's his way so that's awesome. one, one thing that i that i thought of when you mentioned uh painting outdoors with your father uh i thought of uh doing uh, uh gesture sketching you know i i always start my day doing some some gesture sketches uh you know and you can do them from life but uh the internet also offers a lot of great tools where you have one minute poses or you can just pause YouTube videos. And uh, the first time I did the, these one minute drawings, you know, I was just, I was lost because, you know, it's one minute and you just put two lines on the paper and, and then there's the next pose. But doing that on a regular basis, it's like stretching time, you know, it's, oh yeah. You, you observe so many things all at once and you really start training that. And it's the same thing with what you mentioned with outdoor painting. You know, the first time you go, it's just, whoa, the light is changing. And oh, well, every you have to focus on everything at the same time. But if you do it over and over again, then after a while, you start to, to see the big picture. If you look at the at the landscape sketches of Nathan Fawkes, you know, it's just oh, a few yeah. brush strokes, but he knows how to capture the essence of what he's seeing. And once you get that, and I, that's what I mean, you know, to me, all the things I'm doing is not so different because, you know, when I do a caricature, I think of the big masses first, understanding the structure of the head. And that's similar when you do mm -hmm. uh, a, a regular portrait or when you do a landscape, you know, you, you block in the, and you look at the values. The values is something that you use in, in portrait painting, in character design. Mm -hmm. When I, uh, you mentioned the how the caricatures I did for the cover, uh, that, that I could use my knowledge of character design. And it's basically the same principle. You know, if you have this corner of the mouth going up and you want to show how that's stretched, you know, you get these wrinkles around the mouth and to put them in a certain patter, pattern, uh, you know, emphasizes the fact that there's tension on the on those muscles there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the same thing applies when you have a character, you know, you want to feel that it's stretched, you know, you want to, you know, you want to put a contrast there. One part stretches, the other relaxes. And the more you add the contrast, you get this, this feeling of, of dynamics in there. And yeah. it's all the same principles. And, and, and for me, you know, I, I, if there are artists who, who like to do one thing, I have no problem at all. You know, if that's good, you know, if that's where you, you're happy, you know, I think you should do it. But for me personally, um, I, I, I couldn't understand why I wouldn't try different things. You know, I also yeah. played a saxophone and, uh, you know, it, it's something else, but it, it mm -hmm. even music, you know, making music is something that for example i started playing the piano not so long ago and because i couldn't do anything on a piano it became this thing where i could really analyze you know how do i learn something new and that really helped me in understanding the process of learning and i apply that to my art now because you know those steps became so clear for me so i i set these little challenges and you know yeah, it's really I think helps. it's important to do that. It's really important to um to to make those kind of challenges for, you know. And I think too like what you were saying um before about the stretching, you know, with the with the even in the body and everything. I think really an important key element to all that is is exaggeration. Um cuz exaggeration is one of those tools that 
um, you, you know, it, it's, it's not like, like, I know there's a lot of caricature art, artists that are going to watch this and listen to this. And a lot of them are really into exaggeration, right? And, or they, and, but I'm not talking about <laughs> exaggeration, like how far can we mess someone's face up? I'm mm -hmm. talking about like what you were talking about with just, you know, like, like you said, like the, just to show the tension in the expression, sometimes just that one part needs that exaggeration mm -hmm. to, to, to tell that message or even the body pose, how you're posing the body and you're stretching, you know, like you're talking about that, that jazz kind of painting you did where the, the one guy is taller and you're, you know, all that is exaggeration used to, it's, it's like, it's like an ingredient. And I, I, I always, I, I have this like analogy for when I teach, um, for my caricature class is that <clears throat> exaggeration for me is basically it's like an ingredient it's like it's like the sauce on a pizza you know if you have too much sauce it's not going to be a good pizza um if the sauce tastes like ketchup guess what bad pizza you know it's got to be just right the right amount of sauce mm. the right flavor yeah, yeah yeah you know and so you know it's i think it's important as an artist not even i mean even in non-caricature work um, artists can use exaggeration um, oh yeah and and if you use it the right way it can be such a powerful tool it and is, um, it's so powerful yeah and, and when you look at paintings by by sergeant i think we have the mm -hmm. same painter we admire so, yeah so uh you know when you look at it, some of his paintings and if you really analyze the bodies they're really tall he exaggerated yeah. or, or they're one arm leaning or, over a couch it, it's it's way too long if you look at it technically and, and anatomically yeah even madame x when, like that yeah, profile yeah, yeah. and everything it's just but, slightly but when, exactly and it's it's because he's saying something and it's it's exactly like saying something you know if i want yeah to be clear i will say it extra clear or i pronounce it clearer or harder louder you know so it, it's same in painting, you know, what is it that you want to say? And that is the thing you can emphasize in your work. And the other stuff, you you don't have to emphasize that much because yeah. if you emphasize everything, you know, it's like if I do a caricature of you and I would make your nose bigger and I would make your mustache bigger and I make your eyes, I make everything bigger. I just have a big <laughs> portrait, you know, that's not you a You got caricature. the elephant man with a mustache. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, exactly. And that, that's the thing, too. I think it's really, really important. Um, and, and same with like character design, too. Um, like, I, like some of the best uh, drawings are like I, I love um, uh, Carter Goodrich and um, oh, yes. And uh, Peter he's DeSev amazing. and like some, some of those artists. Um, I can't think of the guy's name right now, but he's the guy that did all the um, How to Train Your Dragon um work. Marley. yes yes oh man love his stuff too and yeah. but the one thing is those guys the the, the key thing is uh, they're not just drawing a silly you know coming up with a silly fish you know for nemo or whatever they're working on they're it's like it's like the, the exaggeration in a certain point that's telling the story of who that character mm. is now and yeah. if you're and if you're on 10 all the time it's going to be psychotic you know yeah and so yeah. it's just that key thing you know and uh, I think that's really, really important, especially when you're doing caricature illustration, you know, for publication. You can't be on on ten all the time. No, you, no. And, and if you want it to have the most impact, you've got to, you know, you got to know when to pull back and where to, yes, you know, where yeah, to where to really put your punch, telling a story. You yeah. know, like like for, for like your your Nancy Pelosi, for example. Um, you know, I thought that it was the right amount of exaggeration in her her expression. Um, but it's not about, hey, look at this caricature of Nancy Pelosi. It's like, no, there's a story here. And the exaggeration is really in that movement and, mm. you know, how she's swinging and everything. Yeah. And that's, you know, you know, if, if, if it was just all of how far you can you push those sunken in eyes and all that kind of stuff, um, you would miss the point, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's a that's key I, I, thing. I always think that, you know, within every a uh, piece of art that you do you create a, a visual language so mm -hmm. uh you know and uh things start working together so if you use all uh you know soft edges throughout the whole thing it becomes this this language in which you're talking right now yeah so if then suddenly you create these hard edges then you know you're you're really making a bold statement and if you do that in an ink drawing where you're you know, drawing with, with lines all the time, you, you won't notice it. So it's really important to find the right balance within the world that you're creating at that point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. Oh, uh, and, and speaking of, uh, man, we've been talking for an hour already. Um, <laughs> and uh, that's fine. I don't mind. Uh, there's no time limit on this. It can, you know, can go as long as you want. But 
Um, we can keep talking about stuff, but there are, this is, as I mentioned to you before, I've, yeah. I've gotten more drawings of you than I've done of anybody so far. Um, I believe yes. it's like 42. <laughs> oh, I, I wonder <laughs> so, <laughs> why that is. <laughs> well, uh, I, I think you've got a lot of fans, man, which is awesome. Um, so we can start looking at some of those drawings. Um, and this is the part of, of the podcast where I, I butcher everybody's name. I've started to realize this. <laughs> um, I, 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 there's, so I'm just going to say sorry ahead of time because there's, there's actually a lot of people that said they're, they're from – um, they're from your neck of the woods. And so, uh, maybe you can help me say their names <laughs> Okay, I'll give it a try. <laughs> because I, I tried reading some of them uh, as they're sending. I'm like, Oh man, these, these, these people are trying to kill me. There's no way I'm going <laughs> to say that name. Right. Um, so let's, let's start looking at some drawings and we can, uh, we can, um, uh, let's see, we can continue our conversation while we look at awesome artwork. So, wow, you, wow uh, that's so, so cool. You so, uh, yeah, this first one is by um, Arnie Van, Van Der Rey. Oh, that's, uh, that's a good friend of mine. Oh, okay. Yes, that's so cool. He, he <laughs> says, uh, uh, I couldn't let this pass. <laughs> so he had to draw me. Yeah, that's cool. He, he's amazing. That's awesome. That's, a, that's really awesome. Very cool. Thanks. Yeah, and by the way, um, these are, I'm, I'm going to show you these in the order that they came. So I don't I don't okay. like select which which ones I show. It's just when they came, because uh, I don't want to uh, you know. Uh, sorry. Oh, it's, it's okay. Yeah, he, he, I was just saying he's an amazing artist. He did a portrait of my son that is that is hanging in our house. Oh, that's awesome. That is, you know, and it's it that is a, a difficult thing to do because, uh, uh, you know, he to paint a, an other artist's son. Yeah. At a at a young age, you know, young children are often hard to to paint, but he yeah. really. He really caught the nature, of, you know, the essence, and uh, that's awesome. So, thanks, Arna. It's Arna. Is that how you say it? Yes. Okay, you got to help me with this. <laughs> <laughs> um, this next one is by oh. <laughs> um, Alani Jimenez, and uh, he's he's an awesome guy. I met him a, a couple years back. He's a really cool, dude. Um, I like I like how he did your your mouth. Yes, it it, it it makes me like a, like a bug or an insect or something with those <laughs> yeah. big eyes. Yeah, you know, it, it, it kind of reminds me also a little bit of like a Dr. Seuss character, you know? Oh, yeah. A little That's bit. That's right, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And, uh, you know, I, I, I have to, you know, I think people are supposed to send them to you directly, and I have to say I saw some of them already. Because oh, I know. People post, are being naughty. And, yes. So uh, I saw this one, uh, <laughs> but I, I love it. You know, yeah. he, he makes me look uh, look handsome <laughs> with the with the shiny eyes. The shiny eyes, and this this is Bertrand uh, Dalle, I think he's, yes. he's he's sent a couple so far. Um, yeah, this is pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, uh, and this one is by wow. David Mauder. That's cool. And uh, yeah, it's, it's so funny how some people bring out things that I I wouldn't you know i i wouldn't even know that you could bring out from my face so <laughs> it, it's uh it's really nice i love yeah. the, the technique on this one also the, the hatching yeah it's very cool and uh this one's by lars eric robinson and oh wow he's got the the devil and the the the, the, the <laughs> angel what's that so wow. <laughs> So I don't What's know. That about? I don't know. Maybe, maybe you, you guys need to have a conversation. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the devil looks stronger, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the dark side. Yes, uh, that's always better, right? Yeah. You know, when you see those old paintings in churches, that yeah, that, you know, when they have uh, hell, is always the the much much more fun part to look at <laughs> yeah, that's true uh this one again i this is i'm gonna mess this name up this is th uh thesis wessels dice vessels dice is a dutch guys yes, yes. Very dutch. how do you say it dice vessels dice vessels okay so that's nice see this is awesome that you can help me out with yeah. this because i I've, <laughs> I've recognized this i've seen this name before many times and i okay so um this one is uh by Amitaba, and I'm, I, I do not even know how to say the last name. Um, very, very interesting last name. Deshpande? I don't know. Okay. This, this happens. You know what's really cool is, like, every single one of these episodes I've done, um, 
I'm getting people from all over the place sending drawings, which was so awesome. And it's exactly what I want is I want um, to, I want this to kind of be an artist community of people from all over the world. Yeah. And, and we can all kind of grow together as a family, you know? Um, but in the meantime, but, I'm having to pronounce but, names that I can't <laughs> pronounce. <laughs> well, that, well, that's what I like about this podcast. Also that you, you don't limit yourself to, to just caricature art, but you have all these amazing kinds of artists and i think it's yeah. really refreshing because it it shows how the creative process goes everywhere mm -hmm. it's it's really cool yeah and with this drawing what i really like i don't know wh where this person is from but um uh, you know there is this uh, character designer called uh, i now i'm butchering names but i think he's called datarash kamat and mm. uh he's from india and when he draws characters they are Indian characters, and, and even when he draws Western characters, you can see the influence of his culture, and I get the feeling... That's really that cool. I don't know where this person's from. I get the feeling that there's influence from his culture in his drawing. It, it looks... Yeah. Uh, there's something in there that, that gives me that feeling. Mm -hmm. so, no, well, totally, yeah. It's very cool. Um, this one is by Mike Epp, a very nice... Uh, uh, drawing technique. Yeah, I, I like how the the signature almost looks like like an earring in a way. <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> notice that until now. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's cool, I, I, and I like the yeah, it's it's rendered very beautifully. Also, the the curls. I think that's that's really nice where you see that someone really uh, created a, a personal design to it. You know, it's not just copying the photo, but really creating his own vision of, of what yeah. he sees and it, it, it kind of cool. does have a little almost a little bit of a carter goodrich feel to it like the style you know what i mean like the, the like uh, in the hair it's kind of cool yeah little hatches everywhere yeah uh this one is by alexander Madden. and that's uh, cool yeah there's I, I see a little bit like in the expression a little bit of mr bean in there. <laughs> <laughs> bean, bean. <laughs> yeah, well, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've never had that said before. <laughs> yeah, there's a first for everything. I like this one a lot. This oh, is by wow. Ken Coogan. Beautiful. I really That's like a, the the it's, style. It's really great. Yeah, it's it's a great style, and I, I, I it, it the likeness is really good as well. Yeah. You know, I love you know uh, above the eyebrow you have this block. That's just a square of, of light. I yeah. love that. Yeah, it, I really do it was, love it. The style too. It's, it's a, uh, it's it, it's weird. It's 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 digital, but it almost feels like a watercolor painting. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Yeah, awesome. Also, yeah. you know those, those little uh, chords from the, uh, you know, from the sweater. How they yeah. end in you know it, it's it's beautiful. Yeah, very cool piece. Um, this one is um, <laughs> by Sebastian Dahlstrom, and uh, I, li I like how soft this this one is. It kind of almost has an out of focus feel to it. It's kind of cool. Yeah, but still, it it has focus on you know. Uh, I see the ear and the eye and the, and the tooth. That's the first things I look at, and I think that's a a nice triangle. Yeah. Where you where you get the focus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's yeah. There's definitely some nice uh, shape pushing here. Uh, this one uh, is a traditional piece. This is by um, cool. Fairy Way. Wow! Almost, almost, some, almost got some Jack Nicholson going on there. <laughs> yeah. Here's Walter. <laughs> Here's Walter. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. cool. I, I, <laughs> a little bolder than I am. Wow! This is uh, this is by uh, Jeremy uh, Lou. You know what? What I think is the most scary about this is that there is likeness in there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that I think that the eyes. I really like the eyes a lot. Yeah, they're very, yeah. They're very. They're done very well. You know, a lot of good yeah, expression absolutely. in there. Absolutely. Um, this one is by Jared Hobson. Wow, and, uh, it's cool. Like out of focus it's like thing going a on. Billy Crystal. Oh yeah, I could see that. Yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, I can definitely see that now. From Jack Nicholson to Billy Crystal. Yeah, 
Who, who would have thought? Maybe maybe there's going to be a Robin Williams coming up. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I like I like the out of focus feel too. It's kind of yeah. cool. Um, and this one is oh, wow. by Theodosis. Um, and I'm sorry, dude. I'm going to put your name like on the screen, but I I'm not even going to try <laughs> to say your last name because it's really it's too hard for for Jason to say. Yeah, this is really <laughs> a nice drawing. Yeah, it's really I don't, cool. I don't know if it if it's really me, uh, but it's a really great drawing. And, you know, I, I, I've been thinking about that. You know, it, it is something that is hard to, to really put your finger on. What, what is likeness? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can explain a lot about how to push shapes, how, you know, thinking of, uh, you know, the, the forms, the, the volumes and everything. Mm -hmm. But, what is likeness? I think that is uh, that is really a difficult thing to to grasp. What 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 are your thoughts about that? Um, I uh, I mean, for me, it, it, when I when I start getting into a, you know caricature uh, of somebody, I I try to to capture the the my, the feeling or the impression that. I'm I'm you know I right away when I look at someone I'm I'm seeing things I'm I'm kind of uh, calculating things in my mind, um, and so I, I'm kind of I, I kind of try to think about the silhouette of a person, um, and I, I like like what you said I think about the the big shapes, um, and and how you know first of all how does it make me feel, uh, and and then the likeness, it, to me it's it's all about the uh, the eyes and the mouth, and how they relate to one another and it's it's just I'm making that decision of what I want to push and, and why I want to push it I mean likeness I guess I, I don't I don't think it's a subjective thing I don't think it's something where it's like you know I, I think something e either looks like someone or, or it doesn't you know mm -hmm. um, I mean I like for example like I've, I've seen plenty of Trumps out there that look nothing like Trump and it's just like you can't just you know draw an orange blob and put some blonde hair on it and it's trump i mean mm -hmm. that's 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 kind of a, a an easy way out oh yeah that that's symbolizing trump rather than, yeah, than exactly. doing an actual drawing so so i think i think likeness um it, to me it's the most important thing um and then you know it's it's got to be the foundation you know mm -hmm. um and then from there you can take it to you know that's that's the great thing about caricature is you can take it <laughs> to another place you know um, this one is by Jonathan Groot, and um, I believe he told me it was gouache. Um, I think That's this is so gouache. cool. Yeah, it, it reminds me a little bit of those ancient Fayum paintings. You know those? Uh, I think they're from from, from Egypt. They, oh. they used to paint those on on coffins, where, where oh, so, yeah. so you could still see what what the deceased looked like, and and they're really old, and you see them in museums, and they, you know, when you look at them. It's like someone you could meet in the street right now. And the technique really reminds me a little bit of those. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully this is not going to be on your coffin anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's – but yeah, I like um, – I really like the, the paint work in, in the beard area with the like the oranges yeah. and the ochres and stuff. It looks really cool. Nice technique. Uh, th this one is by Thierry um, – Coquillet. I'm pretty sure I'm saying his name wrong. Um, I've, I've, he's an, oh, man, he's an amazing artist. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know really, it. I really love this piece. Like when I, I opened this up, I was like, damn, it's awesome. Yes. I, I have seen this, this one online already. And yeah, this, I, I love this one. I love the shapes. It's really cool. I do have, you know, I was wondering when I looked at it, because I know his work and, and he's an amazing artist, but looking at this, I thought for a second, uh, you know, would this be uh, photo manipulation? But then I looked closely at the eyes and, and stuff, and then I, I saw those brush strokes. Yeah. But then there are some places, for instance, in the beard, you get this stretch of, of some, some hairs or there where it feels like it is a stretched in a way that you wouldn't stretch it if you would draw it, you know what I mean? Hmm. So I, I have no idea. I, I'm not accusing or, or you know, <laughs> even if it is, you know, there there's no problem. I was just curious because, uh, you know, because I saw these these things. But then again, you know, 
in the end, there is no uh, rules how how you get to the result. And uh, there is this artist. I don't know his name right now. He does only photo manipulations. I, personally, Rod- Rodney I, I, Pike. I to mention, yeah, that that's him. And yeah, you know, he does it. great caricatures. He uses that as his tool, as his painting mm-hmm. tool, and, and I think they're amazing. And uh, uh, so whether this is or not, I, and I do need to mention, I don't think this is, but he might have used it as a, mm. as a part of, of, you know, pushing the shapes. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm familiar. I've seen a lot of his work before, and he mostly, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think digital is something new um, because mm-hmm. I think mostly he does uh, really awesome cross-hatching. Um, yes. and very tight cross hatching. And then I think he paints on top of it in Photoshop. So, um, okay. but yeah, I, I, this is, this is, I like the shapes and, and I like the expression a lot in this too. It's Absolutely. Cool. I, I think the likeness, you know, when you talk of about likeness, I think the likeness is in here and, and in all of his work and, you know, definitely people should check out his work because it, I'm, I'm really a fan of it, of his art because, you know, when you, sometimes you, come across caricature artists and you see their work and then you're like whoa i need to follow this dude because <laughs> this is just just amazing yeah no he's really good he's awesome um this next one is by sarah heng um hearts um wow. I, th- I think i said that wrong <laughs> <laughs> everybody's gonna hate me <laughs> this is the part of the show where jason <laughs> messes up everybody's name well, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, coming back to to what I said about photo ma- manipulation, it, it's it's uh, one thing that I I always find, you know, when you uh, go to uh, illustrators, you know, no one mentions using photos as a reference, and when you go to painters, they are always talking about should you use photos, yes or no, or should you paint from life. Mm-hmm. And, and I think when it comes to photo manipulation, it's it's the same thing, you know. It, it there's this it's uh, taboo. You you shouldn't do that. And uh, I think with all kinds of art, you know, it it doesn't really matter what tool you use. Um, for me, I love to to draw and I love to understand what I'm doing, and that's why yeah. you know for that's why I love working traditionally. Also, I I, I think it's amazing that there. Are, are artists now who never work traditionally and i don't know if it's a good or bad thing but what i do know is that <laughs> there is no undo button when it comes to yeah. traditional work I, so I, it, it forces you to commit to things and in photoshop you you can fool yourself thinking you can make something beautiful mm-hmm. where it's just effects and um uh, you know, I, I don't want to be in that place, so I always will be. And, and I love the fact of having an original. So, yeah. Uh, for me, and I, I, I'm maybe old because I'm from the time where everyone used to draw with pencil on paper, and I still love to do that. Yes. Uh, and, and, you know, I also love digital because it's, it's a new tool that offers new possibilities. Mm-hmm. But for learning, I think traditional is, is, helps you to, uh, to get to the point really fast. Oh yeah, no. I think I think it's I think it's a really good point because I I, I think I almost end up talking about this in every episode uh, with artists that are uh, painters and traditional artists is that I personally think it's important to 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 paint and draw traditionally. Um, I think it teaches you um, how to you know it teaches you respect. I think also for the for the fact of you know a, a medium is is not something that is 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 as easy as pushing buttons, you know, mm-hmm. um, and learning how to actually push paint around and how to work with color and, and medium and how to, how to paint in layers and how to uh, just different things about getting your hands dirty on a project. Um, uh, there's so much struggle that comes with learning how to, mm-hmm. how to, to paint with gouache and watercolor and acrylic and oil and how to use pastels and, and all, all the struggle, struggle and frustration that you're going to go through as an artist is only going to make you a better artist, especially mm. if you're doing a lot of digital work. And I find it really strange how many artists out there work digitally and they do um, like awesome stuff, but they cannot paint, pick up a paintbrush mm. and paint to, to save their lives. Mm. That weirds me out. And, and it's like, mm. and, I, and, and, you know. But on the other it, hand, it's, you know, if it... it, it, it if that is how they can express themselves, 
completely yeah that then you know that that's just fine right yeah yeah i I'm, I'm not saying um it's weird in a way where you know like i don't respect them i'm saying i'm like it's it's weird that you can paint that well digitally but you can't mm. paint with acrylics or anything else yeah yeah like it's just that's it's it's interesting and we're living in a in a in a time right now where i like you i've been drawing obsessively since i was a little kid and you know i taught myself how to draw how to paint um and then all of a sudden you know the digital stuff starts coming out and i remember at first i was completely against it and um <laughs> and then i eventually um uh, joe bloom is the one who uh he mm. he was like dude you gotta try that try working on a tablet it, you know because i was you know i was starting to do all these deadlines and i was using acrylics and it was super stressful and I, ref I refused to, to, to do the digital thing. But then once I tried it, I was like, oh, man, yeah, okay, I can, I can do this. I can, I can make this work. And I can, I can still be an artist. I can still paint with it. So I understand both sides of it. Um, but I do think it's really important uh, to work traditionally, even if it's just in your sketchbooks. You, know, mm -hmm. you, you don't have to show anybody. You know? But I think it's really good overall for your work. And I think that... Um, if you're a digital artist, the more you work traditionally, the better your digital work's going to be because you're going to understand um, in, in, in a more three-dimensional way of how uh, mediums actually work, you know, mm. how, to, yeah. how to be a painter, you know. And by the way, yeah. this drawing here is by Danny, um, Danny Vliegen, and I'm, I don't know if I said that right. <laughs> right. Vliegen? I, I, I can't see the name, so I, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> the name the name's up uh at the top left. You should, I don't know if you can see it on your okay. screen. Uh Danny Fliegen. Ah, see you say it's so fancy and nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Danny cool. Fliegen. Yeah, I was uh I went to Austria a couple years back and I I got to go two years in a row, made a lot of good friends. Uh this one oh, wow. is by Gail Dirks, by the way. Um and um it was so great uh, the first time I went to Austria and my friends there and they and they they told me I got to hear my name for the first time. It was <laughs> Jason Zyla, and I was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is awesome. I, can, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I wish everyone would call me Jason Zyla. Yes, I, just, I love it. And I was just like, you know, they they announced me before I went out and did my workshop. I and mean, please, please welcome Jason Zyla. I'm like, yes. yes. This is so okay. cool. <laughs> uh, I'll just call you Jason Zyla from yeah, now on. Yeah, I love it. Really, <laughs> I wish people here would catch on, but they keep calling me Siler and yeah. Um, yeah, this one's pretty cool too. More portrait like. Yeah. Um, uh, this next one is by Richard Clark. Oh, wow. wow, that is cool. And there's some nice shape push in there. Yeah. It is interesting seeing the different perspectives, you know? Yes, and also, you know, so many different techniques. When you look at the, the line work in, in the beard and the, in the hair, and if you compare it to some of the other drawings, it's such a, such a unique approach. I love yeah. that. Yeah. All different minds. Yeah. Uh, and this one uh, is by Helen um, Irony, and uh, it's got a nice painterly feel to it. Yeah. Yeah, nice brushwork. You know, I wish I could comb my hair like that. You know, it always goes all in every direction. This <laughs> this looks. This is what I what I intend when I yeah. stand in front of the mirror. <laughs> yeah, I've seen I've seen people uh, draw me with my mustache before, and they always make it like real perfect. But it's it's never perfect. It's, <laughs> there's always like hairs going different ways, and the curls are, you know, it's it's. Uh, but that's part of what's fun about having a mustache. Yeah. Um, this one is is by uh, Guy Barbosa. I really oh, like funny. this one a lot. Um, yeah, I love. It made the, me laugh, so yeah. that's a good thing, right? <laughs> yeah. I think that's a, that's a also an important thing I, I think to mention is humor in art. You know, in I think, especially uh, you know, caricature artists, you know, who really work at parties, and you know, they're not. Uh, taken seriously all the time and you you could think well they shouldn't because they do caricatures but i mean their the art form yeah. isn't taken seriously and when you think of it you know they use they do something that is so important because they use art to make people laugh to to give them a, a good feeling you know yeah. and mm -hmm. uh i think that is 
even in in stand up comedy you know you've been interviewing uh, these comedians as well and it is as an art form it's not always taken seriously i think and for me i think humor in art is is so important we need that in the world oh yeah and uh, so i think you know this guy made me laugh with his character and i think that's <laughs> That's a powerful gift as an artist, you know, to make people laugh. Yeah, you know what? And that's a really good point, too, because um, that that's, like, really good caricature, like the really good stuff that's, you know, there's 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 a handful of artists that I know out there that, you know, every once in a while they do a piece from, like, that is exactly what it's all about. You know, like, mm. the humor and... and the, the, the right amount of ex exaggeration, the storytelling, you know. Um, and that's one thing I like about Tom Fluherty's work is he always makes mm. me laugh. I think he, he, he's, yeah. he's, he's really good at being funny. Like, yes, um, and, he, and he's a very animated person. Um, and uh, I'll be talking to him soon, too. But uh, he, that, cool. that's, that's the thing I like about his work, too, is that, you know, he does bring that funny to the table. And I think it's important, yes. you know. And that's why, that's why I love his drawings, just because he's not just drawing a lady – um, you know, at the dog show, he's like, he's, there's so much character in it and story. Oh yeah. Pu pushing absolutely. so much. And, and that, that's, yeah. what, that's what makes it so joyful. Um, yeah, absolutely. This one is by Patrick Haggerty. Oh, nice. That's a beautiful drawing. Yeah. Really cool. It looks like it's all done with, uh, that pen right there. <laughs> that exact. <laughs> yeah. <pen. laughs> yeah. That's cool. Um, this one Whoa. is by Eugenio uh, Candia. And wow, that's cool. Yeah. I like the out of focus thing again. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I've noticed um, a, uh, a similar thing with a few of the drawings of how people are doing your jaw line. Um, yeah. Kind of very angular. And, uh, yeah. It's much, interesting. Uh, much more present than, than I know, know it to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. That's funny. Um, this one is by oh. Asamari Abdullah. And uh, this artist has submitted uh, drawings, I think, I don't know if it's every episode, but quite a bit. Um, mm. And uh, I think this is the first drawing. Most of them, I think, are digital paintings. Okay. But, yeah, it's that's pretty a, cool. It's a great drawing, yeah. And uh, I told you there's yes. a lot of these. But this one's uh, yeah. Dustin Clark. I, this yeah, one, I love, this I, one made me laugh when I saw it. Yeah, I love this one. And and yeah. you know what's funny? You know, he has this one eye popping out, and yeah. I do actually have this asymmetry in in my eyes where one eye seems to come out a little more. And I, I, he, he really <laughs> captured that very well. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's um, what I like about this too is it, it looks animated. It, it look it looks mm -hmm. like. It's, it looks like a paused frame in a, in a live <laughs> cartoon, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> like, it, like, it looks like you're, it paused right before you turn to your friend and, and say something like, uh, did you see that guy over there <laughs> riding his bike? You know? Yes. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's awesome. Uh, this one also. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> this one. <That's> cool. You, you, you <laughs> <laughs> this one makes me think of uh, like a Pez dispenser, you know those candy, <laughs> those candy <laughs> Pez. It's like this is the Vouter, the Vouter pen uh, Pez. Yes, dispenser. I want one. Like just like you lift the hat up and like candy oh, pops wow. out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is by Juan is Carlos so uh, Pinelia. Very cool. But yeah, I, I I think something about this just like the colors. Um, and just the, you're just like looking straight forward with this smile and the, and the way that how the hat is on top, I right away I was like this is like a Pez candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. That's funny. It's so funny. Um, this one's interesting Whoa. too. Yeah, That's this cool. This is very cool. This is like, by uh, Sala um, Kudari. By, Ron by Ronald Searle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Very it's cool. It's really cool. Yeah. Yes. Um. I, I always I can't would love tell. to be be it, that loose and it's so hard to do that right. Yeah. It looks it's hard to tell if this is actual traditional or digital because mm -hmm. there's so many yeah. digital effects now where you can do stuff like that. Oh yeah. But um I have no idea. Either way it looks cool. It's very, yeah. it's a cool piece. It's refreshing to see something different too. Yeah. 
I so. was just wondering, it's, it's something completely different, but I, I just wanted to talk about that. You know, some artists, when I started out, you know, we mentioned uh, Steve Brodner, uh, but yeah. I remember there was uh, Natalie Ascensius. You know her? I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. Okay, Natalie and Ascensius. then uh, Daniel Adel, Adele. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I know Adele, yep. I, I used to see his work all over the place. I never see anything anymore. You you know, is I don't work? I don't know. Um, Daniel Dell, he he, he was, inspiration to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, he was um, like I used to like I used to like his caricature stuff years ago. He was he was like I don't know what he's doing now. Um, his his work kind of reminded me of um, J C Leindecker doing caricature work. <laughs> Um, yeah. Just like the paint technique, very very awesome uh, oil painter. His yeah. his caricature work was more. I, I was I was never really into the caricature work too much be, as as far as caricature goes because it was mostly portraits with little bodies. Mm -hmm. um, but his technique is amazing. Um, yeah. And the other thing that um, that I like about his work, um, I don't know if you've seen his watercolor work, um, but he oh yeah his watercolor yeah. like landscapes and stuff are yeah. incredible yeah that's yeah mind blowing yeah I, I I think he's an awesome artist I I don't know I I haven't seen his work either for a while okay. so I'm not sure what he's doing or but uh, I know he's a he's a brilliant artist so I'm yeah. sure he's still he's still painting and stuff mm. um yeah and I always like the 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 place in between caricature and realism so when yeah you, you know we mentioned David Levine where yeah uh, in the in that same book there were also these watercolors and you know they were kind of pushed portraits yeah i love that and also when it comes to the technique you know he would just have one big wash of, of green and that would be the the whole shadow area of the face and then with crayon he would add some accents yeah and but but it wasn't a portrait it was really pushed and if you think of it it was actually caricature but not to laugh about, but really as a serious portrait. That's, oh, yeah. you know, I love that place where you kind of in between things. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, this one here is by Michelle uh, Pendergrass. Wow, it's it's almost like it's it's pastel. Yeah. But I think it's digital, right? Yeah, it, it looks digital to me. But yeah, another interesting take. Yeah. Um. Oh, and this one is the, mm. okay. I was debating on showing this one or not, <laughs> just because <laughs> I, it's funny. But like, so this is by Laurent Lapaste. I probably said mm -hmm. that really wrong. I'm sorry, Laurent. Uh, but th I got this in an email, and all it said was, um, "I was drunk when I did this." <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's all it said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So maybe that's that's mm. why it looks a little bit like a caveman. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Well, but actually, <laughs> when you draw like this when you're drunk, I'd love to see what he draws when he's sober. Yeah. And it looks like it's still wet in, when he took the photo. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I think still there's a lot of cool, yeah. you know, things in there. But it just cracked me up. I, I just I was like, this is the funniest <laughs> thing ever. I was drunk when I did this. <laughs> Um, by the way, I'm going to uh, ask you... Uh, don't don't uh, ever send your work to clients that way. Yeah, don't do that. Um, uh, I'm going to read you a, a couple questions while we look at these because we still have okay. like 10 more to look at. So, uh, so okay. one of the questions is from Sebastian. Um, he's one of the artists on here. And he said, I'm a big fan of Wooter's character design work in particular. And I'd love to hear his thoughts on weight distribution on characters, how to make them feel whole, grounded, and in balance. Which is a good question. Yeah. And uh, real quick yeah. before you oh, wow. answer, this That's one is cool. by Ivan Aginko, which is really cool. Oh, nice. With some of my art and Sargent's art in the background. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so, um, what, well, I heard that, uh, I don't know who said it. It was an animator. And uh, they said that animators always uh, know where the weight is of their character in at any given moment of, of their sequence. And so when I heard that, I started studying animation and not in the sense that, you know, I, I really need to learn everything about animation and become an animator, but enough to understand what it is they are doing. And so that's what I would recommend to look at animations or mm, to, yeah. uh, to look at 
at sequences. So when I, when I draw characters, I think not of it just as this moment that I draw, but I also think, you know, where did this character come from and where is he going? So I understand where the weight is and where it's going to. And so you you always need to, you know, either you have the feet right under your character so he's balanced, or you have them behind them or in front of them where they're not balanced, which means, you know, that means they're moving because the feet aren't right under them. So otherwise they would fall over. Maybe they do fall over or they're walking. But yeah. if, you know, so it, it depends where you, where you place the feet. But most important is, is to understand, you know, what's the action that's happening. You know, if he's standing still, he's, he's, he's in rest, you know, so the feet can be right under this character. If you want to put a movement in there, you should play with, you know how the weight is distributed so you play with the the placement of of the feet and the angles of the uh uh of the design and yeah. so it's really you know it, it's really a big thing to to discuss completely um you know in, in a few words but that's uh, in, if i would say one thing it's really study animation or footage of yeah. people who are moving because that's what's happening you know the weight isn't we are hardly ever completely stiff and standing still we are all we're living creatures so we're always moving so this weight is going back and forth even when i'm sitting you know i'm i'm leaning on this arm or on this arm and uh, so that's what you need to focus on what's happened just yeah. before right after yeah that's good that's that's awesome um this next one is by kate oleska um oh, nice yeah this is really nice that's beautiful that's a classic technique Mm -hmm. It's really beautiful. Yeah, I like I like the uh, the just the handling of the even the background. Uh, yeah, the edges of the of the the head into the background is really cool. Yeah, she's she's awesome. She's been doing um, uh, a lot of uh, pet portraits lately, and they're really really okay. cool. Like really good. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, it's so amazing to see so many artists took the time. You know, this is yeah. This, these are all drawings that take a lot of time to, to do. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really special. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Um, I, uh, an online friend, uh, wrote, wrote recently, I was like, um, are you paying these artists to do this? And I was like, N uh, no, uh, <laughs> and uh, I just, I was trying, you know, it's fine. It's, it's fine if you have an issue with it, but uh, he was not happy about that. And I tried to explain to him, Hey, this is, um, an opportunity for artists, um, to to draw some it's to you know it's 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 exposure but it's also an opportunity for artists to be able to to do a drawing uh, for the for a guest someone that they look up to and like uh, for that person to see their work um, and it, it's it's all about fun you know it's about and, and if you don't, you don't have to do it you know <laughs> no that's, if, if that's you, exactly what I was going yeah, to say like you don't you know, have you, to you do it um, I'm, I'm, there, I'm there's, you know anybody there's can do it and, yeah. There, and, uh, there's this, there are a lot of these contests online where you can draw caricatures and, you know, they don't pay you because it's it's just for fun. It's, yeah, it's for who, fun. Who and it, you love to draw and you want the, the you know. And also, um, you know, uh, it's really cool that Wacom is sponsoring me and they've been really kind to, to give away a free Cintiq to, to mm. someone every single week. And so, oh, wow. so, so there is a chance that you can get something out of it. Oh, okay, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so this oh, one wow. is by nice. um, Anad <laughs> Anad Kamawat. Um, uh, that's cool. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna read another question. Um, and this is by Jonathan Groot. Uh, he's the one that did the gouache uh, drawing of you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he says, when doing fine art caricatures, what medium do you prefer, and which features does he enjoy the most in in general? Um, so that's the first part of his question. He's got okay. a two-parter. So when I do caricatures... And uh, here's another one, by oh. the way. Marcos Gamer oh, wow. Gamerero. Wow. Um, so when I do caricatures or fine art, what medium do I love to work in? Yes. That, what do you prefer? Uh, um, I, I like to try a lot of different things, actually. It's, uh, but uh, for painting, I love oils uh, because, you know, you can... There is so much to do in oil, so much to learn. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, so that's yep. a really nice medium. But when I paint outside, I also use gouache a lot because um, it, 
you know, it's it's really easy to to take with you and to do quick sketches. Um, recently, I even have the just a few uh, uh, a little a few colors of watercolor and just one tube of of gouache white. So and and that I can just put in my in my pocket and do these really small sketches. So I I just take uh, about 15 minutes or so to do them. Uh, just you know, like the ones Nathan Fox is doing, uh, and that yeah. those are really great exercises to do to do really fast. Um, but you know, uh, recently I've been drawing in pastels again. Um, I like to do digital art, um, so it's it's really hard to pick a favorite because every uh, material offers different ways to you know to express yourself, and that's that's actually what I love most. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I'm pretty much exactly the same, the same thing. <clears throat> this, the second part of this question was for both of us is, um, do you typically rely on, on a composite of, a, 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 a composite of images of celebrities to make sure not to get into copyright issues <clears throat> or is caricature with various artistic choices, usually a sufficient, uh, deviation from source material? Um, I mean, I'll I'll just answer for me. Uh, I I don't really worry about that because um, when I'm doing a caricature of somebody, I'm not copying a photograph. Um, mm -hmm. I might use a main photo uh, for my main uh, reference as far as you know the position and the, the expression, and everything. But I'm going to use several different um, images um, just to help me get the overall feeling of the person. But in the end. Um, I'm caricaturing. I'm I'm exaggerating. I'm changing things, uh, and most likely, I mean, there's there's a few pieces where you could probably definitely say, oh, I know he used that reference. Um, but again, I'm not worried at all about the copyright thing because I'm creating an original piece of art, and um, and usually for me, I'm doing it for a publication, uh, and it's it's not um, it's 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 it's. it's purpose is for telling a story uh for an illustration you know um it's it's not i'm not making t-shirts <laughs> with their face on it and trying to make money off of it you know um no i think when you when you create a re original piece of art there is not that problem and and your yeah. work is is so far from from the reference that that isn't a problem i i would say yeah and um you know for the cover i did i used a lot of different reference and as you say there there is this main reference because you you will need eventually you know well it depends on your style when when you look at Steve Brodner's work you know he he draws uh, Trump out of his head I think you, you know he looked at him but it's yeah. not based on photo it doesn't rely on photo material as much as, as the kind of caricatures we do yeah and if you if you work that way you know really paint it as if you know it's it's sculptured yeah and you've you, got to have the really, lighting and all that yeah you know, exactly working. so you you will need some some kind of reference and then Still, I used a lot of different photos because I want to understand what he looks like from different angles. And it, eventually, you're designing this this whole piece, this whole scene, where this part of the face that you use reference for is only a, a part of of the whole illustration. And when it comes to to personal work, um, I you know I think a caricature is so much different than the photo itself. Uh, I don't think that's a problem. And sometimes I do, you know, like to take one photo. Uh, but I, you know, I uh, I consider that like uh, improvising the, the same way I would do in jazz music. You know, there's there's the uh, a couple of chords and and they are steady and you just start playing. You know, you you d divert from the melody and you just start playing your own idea and I like to do that with with photos sometimes so I take uh, a, a, you know, I use a photo and I, then I just use one photo and I just use the the composition or the colors or the you know the contrast or whatever it is and I just look at it in an abstract way and it doesn't really become a caricature it's it's more an image that you know the original inspiration came from that photo but it's it, you know the result will be so far from what yeah what that photo what i don't want is uh when you see the the final image and 
you know, when the thing that is beautiful about that work of art is the exact same thing that the photo, is, you know, that makes the photo beautiful because that's the, the work of the a photographer yeah and yep. i don't I don't want to use that as being you know when you have a photo that has beautiful lighting and you have this rim light i wouldn't copy that exactly to to make it look like you know this this beautiful image that would be too much one-on-one -on -one, i i would say yeah I, I i totally agree what what i try to do is i try to find um like you know I, I need to try to find reference of the person like Nancy Pelosi um, where, you know, it's going to fit my illustration from the, the angle and the perspective that I need to draw that person. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll gather like I'll get like 15, 20 pictures of her from different angles and everything just to help, um, you know, with whatever kind of lighting I need. But, yeah, once you, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of, when you start caricaturing, you, 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 you should be taking it to a different place. Um, and a lot of the times, for example, um, you know, like there's there's been plenty of times in, in, for for stuff that I've done, like of Obama, for example, where I've had to completely come up with my own expression because it, it, the illustration calls for it. Like I need mm. like there's one in, that I'm thinking of in particular where I needed to have Obama with this like kind of like, oh. <gasps> surprised look you know and the, I, there's like no pictures of him going <laughs> like that anywhere so i took a ton of pictures of myself making the, the, mm. the exact expression that oh, i cool. needed and then i found you know references of obama from that exact same um angle and and then i just had to figure out how to make his face look That's that cool. way you know yeah and it's not easy um especially that was a weekly standard thing where i had like day and a half to two days so you you know it's mm. not easy but at the same time that's you know if you can do that if you can create your own expression um but it still looks just like the person that's really awesome you know that's something yeah. that's something that i get excited about when you know oh yeah excuse me it doesn't happen all the time um and you know it's not you know uh, but i guess what i'm trying to say is that if, if you can do that um, you can, you know, there's some character artists out there that are really good at just taking um, the a reference of someone and just pushing them so far, but it still looks just like them, and you would never know what reference they were using. You mm. know, I, I just think that's that's really awesome when you can do that. You know, um, this next one is by Justin Peterson, and uh, this looks like a like a pen sketch with some marker. I think. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> now. Um, this one is by uh, Esther. Cool. Um, oh, I, I, you try reading that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's. Uh, I can't say it. Shilagi. Shilagi. Uh, something like that. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry too. This is by Tomas Madasi. He's he oh, said wow. a few before. I like the style with this one too. Yes, absolutely. Some texture. It's a beautiful drawing. Nice texture. And nice shapes as well. Yeah, you know, something like you could you could see that as a as an animated character. Yeah, that's really cool. Nice shapes. Yeah, it's pretty. I like the texture in it too. It's pretty cool. Um, this one is uh, by my Aww. friend from Austria, Bernd um, Ertel, and wow. uh, he uh, he says, "Hi, Walter." He told me to say that. <laughs> I'm saying it in his accent. Hi, Walter. No. <laughs> he doesn't say it like that. <laughs> Your last name works better. Yeah, with that Zyla. Accent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's he's one of the guys that um, he he kind of he runs the Euro caricature. Uh, yeah, thing. I met him. Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, he's a very cool guy. Yeah, and he actually uh, just got a Cintiq sent to him uh, from a piece that he did on on this podcast. So that was okay. pretty cool. He he wrote me today. He's that like, is I, cool. I, he's like I, wow. he, he said the eagle has landed. <laughs> oh wow, that is so, awesome. So I'm very happy for him. Well, it works. <laughs> and he did it for a, a piece that he Whoa. did traditionally. He, he he drew it with a okay. Um, the blue prisma thing that uh, Tom Fluharty has uh, got everyone excited about. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so he did a traditional drawing and he won a Cintiq, so it's pretty cool. Now, oh, wow. this was, I'm assuming, cool. a past um, student of yours, Nico yeah. um, Edlin. Wow, that's so cool. Those are the, the characters from from the course. You know, we have these little in, animations okay. in, in between. So uh, that is really cool. I was going to ask because I do not know what's happening here. 
Um, so it's from your course and school and schoolism. Yeah, yeah. So. For example, the the little black guy in the front. You know, that's the the lesson about hair and clothing. Yeah. So so all these characters, you know, uh, they they I think the the one in the middle, the the big one, is about weight. So the, he, you know, you have this little character, and then oh, suddenly that's great. Really heavy. So they they're little animations I I added. A oh, friend that's of mine, awesome. uh, Willem Lagerwart, he made these animations, and they're really awesome. That's so cool. And what is that that you're holding? Is it, I don't know. Oh, the, I think that's also one of them. That's uh, yeah, that's also a character. Oh, okay. This next one is by Andy Posner. Wow, it's so funny to see so many uh, characters based on the same reference and still so different from one another. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Now, this one's crazy. This is by a friend of mine, Jesse Navarrete. I don't know if I said your name wrong, Jesse. I never said That's your name before. Fascinating. But yeah, this one's trippy, man. Look, a light bulb. Yeah. Um, and uh, like fitting your, the, like the lower part of your face in there. It's, like, <laughs> it's pretty well, awesome. But uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know exactly what I'm looking at, <laughs> <laughs> but it's. It looks really cool. It's a great technique, you know. It it, yeah. it looks like uh, when you use uh, uh, graphite powder, but I think this is digital. But it has the same feel to it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I can't tell if he drew it and then scanned it in and finished digitally. But either way, it's it's a, it's an interesting looking piece. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, you know, even though it's if the face is quite distorted there, I I can still see you, especially in the the eyes and the the mouth expression. Yeah, so yeah. it's a, some nice cool. distortion in there. Um, I, I, there might be one more. There is. This is the last one. This is oh, by yeah. <laughs> Fernando Mendez, and uh, he he said that as much art as that as you do. Um, and, and as many different techniques and different things, you must, um, you know, you know, you must be when everyone else is sleeping uh, out, you know. So I think that's why he he did you as a vampire. <laughs> the vampire. That is so cool. Yeah. Valta, wow. the vampire. Yeah. Yeah, it's very oh, who cool. Who knows? Who knows? It's <laughs> funny. Yeah, that's awesome. Um. <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty cool. Hey, I got. Um, we're gonna have to wrap it up pretty soon. We've been doing this for almost two hours. It's crazy, but it's awesome. I love it. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, thank on. thank you for everybody who uh, sent drawings. That's really cool. There's a lot of awesome artwork. Um, oh yeah, thank you so much. It's it's really cool. And uh, I just have there's two more questions from people uh, that we can wrap okay. up with. Uh, one of them is by from Marcos uh, Gamero, and he says, "Tell us a little bit about your visual references uh, from childhood to the present." Um, I, I think maybe he's saying influences maybe in your work. Um, I'm guessing that's what that means. Yeah, visual references. Well, um, why? Well, I, I think that's what it means. So uh, my inspirations early on and now, right? Yeah. Something like so. that. So, I yeah, guess. well, as I mentioned, you know, my dad was a huge influence on me. Um, and he, he also does all these different things. You know, he, he sculpts, he paints, he does watercolors. And so it, it's something I have seen all my life. And, um, you know, that has a huge impact on me. Uh, you know, where as a child you think your father is Superman. Yeah. And uh, I and there comes this point in your life where you he realize he's he's just human, and I just never got to that point. You know, I still <laughs> I still admire him so much. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you know I, I mentioned a couple of names already. You know, David Levine, Daniel Adel, uh, then uh, C. F. Payne, Norman yeah. Rockwell, Lion Decker. Uh, there's so many uh, in art, you know, you have uh, Zorn, Soroya, Sargent, uh, those are some of my favorites. Um, and then, you know, and what I really love is that now I get to work with a lot of people that I, that I admired uh, uh, some years ago. So, uh, you know, uh, Dominic Louis, um, uh, Brittany Myers, um, Tony Ceruno, Marcelo Vignali, all, all these great artists working in animation and I'm, I'm, I'm missing so many of them. Uh, <laughs> but, 
you know, it's it, it's okay. It's, you, you didn't win it, an Academy uh, Award. You don't. You're not gonna get. You're not gonna get in trouble here. <laughs> you love me. You really love me. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, no. There's. I mean, there's there's so many. I mean, you almost everybody that you listed well, uh, is has been an influence on me as well. I mean, there's so many awesome artists out there. And what's cool yeah, is the I, day and age that we live in now with, you know, how how easy we can communicate to each other. You know, when I was yeah. first starting, like there was no Facebook. There was, yeah. uh, they, you know, I remember um, I, I became friends with Tom Fluharty way before Facebook mm-hmm. by seeing, be collecting his covers from the, from the bookstore um, and studying them like crazy. And then I finally reached out to him and I, I, he didn't have a way to contact him online. And I, I contacted his agent and his agent put me in touch. And then he, he called me and we talked and, and, um, and then uh, we just kept in touch and we just kept writing back and forth and, and, you know, I'd send him my work and he would look at my work and he would give me an honest critique and I'd go back and I'd rework things. And uh, he was r- really a, an awesome, uh, he, he, you know, he took me under his wing, so to speak, mm-hmm. like early on, you know. And uh, so when I got to start working for the Weekly Standard, it was huge for me because I was I felt yeah. like like I, I, I made it with the big boys, you know, like CF yeah, Payne. Yeah. CF Payne, uh, Roberto Prada, all these different people that, wow. you know, I've been following for years, like, like you know, uh, Dan Adel, in a, or Adele, Dan Adele, sorry. Um, it's like, you know, it was, it was, that was such an awesome accomplishment for me personally, because I'm like, yeah. oh, you know, and, and so it, it's, it's great when you, when you look up to, to artists out there and you, and then uh, you eventually, you know, you eventually become their friend and you, you know, and it's, it's like this mutual respect that you can have. And, and it's, I think it, I think it's, it's everyone out there has like their, their art heroes, you know, and, uh, it's, it's one of those things where you should always, I think, always be searching and looking for the next thing to inspire and push you, you know? Yeah. Um, and that, and that, again, that is exactly why I'm doing this podcast because I'm wanting to try to yeah. do that for other people, you know? So. Yeah, cool. Yeah, well, <clears throat> by the way, uh, now that I think of it, you know, Sterling Huntley oh, and yes. Fran- oh. Francis Faleo, yeah. uh, those are two artists that currently inspire me a lot. They, you know, they are so smart <laughs> oh, yeah. in their art. So I yeah. love Sterling's work a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah, really, really, really. That guy's, that guy's insane. I love his work. Um so there's one last question by from Nico, and I said I, I also wanted to ask. Um, let's see, if you had any tips on drawing faster and finishing paintings in less time, it often t- uh, takes me a, a lot of time to finish a painting that a lot of artists that I see would have finished in half the time or so. Um, yeah, you, if you want, you can a- answer. <laughs> I mean, like, I yeah. Have. Well, I, I I said something about that already. Yeah. Um, you know, w- when doing these exercises of, of gesture drawing, I, I learned that over time I get faster and faster. And it, it's not even my goal, but it's just an exercise where you are pushed to within one <clears throat> minute to put the essence of what you see to paper. And um, something else that I, I found that, you know, when you, you know, the, the quick answer is, just draw a lot Mm -hmm. Uh, you know and uh when withdrawing also comes observation and and i found that when i uh when i draw from from observation you know and uh, you know i try to simplify you know i i draw the the you know sometimes the contours or i uh divide what i see into basic shapes you know it can be uh, squares or or triangles or, or combinations of shapes but you know, you start with the simple, basic shapes, and from there on, you work towards the details. And that is something, you know, especially in painting from life, you know, it's so easy to get distracted and to start putting in little details that are not relevant at that point. Because, you know, when you, yeah, when you paint that beautiful sure. eye, and then later on, you, need, you find out that it needs to be just a little lower. <laughs> you know, in digital, you, you can fix that. But still, if you draw it right, it feels different than when you you, when you put it in another place digitally yeah so um you know really try to That's, simplify th- yeah. because sometimes you, you know <coughs> excuse when me. you when you paint the the structure you know the the values darks and lights and you you build that structure in your painting sometimes when you look at some of sergeant's uh, sketches in, in his paintings you know 
he only needs one brush stroke because you know he he laid the foundation in in the division of lights and darks and the right values and structure is there and then all he needs is just a few x and he doesn't need to go into all the details so i think a lot of artists that this person is looking at they are able to to distill the essence and focus on what's important in the painting yeah. and, and and you know just paint that and then <laughs> You know, you just need a lot, of, uh, some details to to finish it, but not everywhere. Yeah, no, that's that's really good advice. Um, I I think for me, like one thing that I try to, um, for, for, well, first of all, you know, I see a lot of people online um, posting their their artwork, and and, the, and it, it sometimes it seems like people want to impress people with how little time it took to do something. Um, you know, I did this in five minutes and it's like, bullshit. No, you didn't. Okay. <laughs> you know, and it, and it, I don't really think that, you know, take as much time as you need. Um, if you're not working on a deadline, uh, for some kind of a publication or something, take all the time you need to, to, to do a, a beautiful piece of art. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a, even, even when you're practicing on your, you know, you're drawing and sketching, um, just just you know, and, and you just draw and, and just let it happen and naturally. And the more you do it, the quicker you're gonna get. But the one thing I would give as advice is, um, is like I noticed like what, what what you were saying was, you know, you spend so much time rendering something like like an eye, and then later you find out it's in the wrong place. I think that a really important thing with character design, caricature, anything, is that before you commit. To, to spending all this time getting on the rendering because everyone wants to start rendering. Everyone wants to jump into color, you know, and all this stuff. It's, it's a real simple thing. Work on a few uh, thumbnail sketches. Um, loosen, it gets yourself loosened up a little bit. Get your, get your mind loose. Get your hand uh, loose. And just explore the possibilities of what you could do with someone's face. Um, and just play with it. Play with the shapes. Push it. Um, you know, draw it one way and then take it to the next place and listen what happens if i if i um make his head a little bit wider this way and you're not you're not doing something where you're spending a lot of time to it and you're committing to it and you're gonna you know you're gonna have it hanging on your mom's refrigerator or something like that this is this is something that can be just for yourself and and you just give it give yourself that opportunity to explore that and then from there start working on on a, a, you know developing the sketch further and even then i always it's, it's like i always try to suggest don't get into the details like what you were saying. You start with larger shapes and start to work down. Um, it's really easy to get carried away with details. And then sometimes it's like you, you've spent so much time on something mm -hmm. and it's not right. You know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. get the foundation right. You know, you know same, yeah. same thing with painting and color. People want to jump into that. But you got to really start to understand values and, and that sort of a thing. Uh, if you don't have values down... You know, you don't need to be worried about color right now, you know, mm. so yeah, it's a fun. Yeah, and, yeah. and one thing you mentioned with thumbnails, you know, uh, you know, spend a lot of time on the preparation, you know, yeah, to start to get, you know, a clear vision in your mind, what you want to express, uh, find reference, do some little thumbnails, you know, explore the possibilities like you mentioned, uh, and you know, sometimes if you have a deadline, this m may seem like something you you don't have time for, but it will save you time in the end because yeah. uh, you know there are a lot of problems that you will need to solve while you're painting anyway. So if there are problems you can solve in advance, that really s speeds up the process. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, well, we it's been uh, it's been two hours of awesomeness. Um, I think that. There's a lot of stuff we packed in here. I think people are going to do Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, we're definitely going to have to do this again, man. Um, yeah, So is awesome. there anything um, – yeah, so thank you so much for doing this. It's awesome. Is there anything that you would like to uh, plug, uh, like your website or anything, anything that you're doing? People can follow you and that sort of a thing. Um, well, my website is uh, woutertulp.com. Um, I'm on Instagram. Uh, That's just my name. Um, I'm working on a book right now. Uh, so, uh, no, stay tuned, follow my socials to, uh, to find out more about that. Uh, once I have it ready, I will start yeah. posting stuff about that. And also the, the schoolism course, uh, a new course coming up. I don't know exactly when, but I'm, I'm working on that. So, um, that will be conceptual characters. 
Yeah, that's going to be awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, very cool. It. Awesome, man. Well, thanks so, so much for doing this. And uh, it's been a real pleasure, yeah, thanks man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's been awesome. My pleasure. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, cool. we'll, t we'll talk again soon, man. Yes. Okay. Bye-bye.